Welcome back to Hilbert College where the Hilbert men's team will now take on the Lions of Penn State Altoona. Stu Boyer and Tom Prince bringing you the game. The women lost a heartbreaker 79-74 in overtime. The officials for this afternoon's games, Anthony Zimbardi, Ron Higgins, and Terry Gleason. I asked one of the officials if I had the crew right. He said, yes, unless we're not good. <laughs> <laughs> So, Especially after watching I, the last game when we had heated I, up. O only reason I brought that up. <laughs> so the Lions from Penn State, Altoona in Penn State colors of blue and white. Blue uniforms, white numerals, and Altoona on the back of the jerseys. And Hilbert in their blue and white. White uniforms, blue numerals, and a blue patch on the side of the shorts. So we'll have a jump ball between Dwayne Jones and Trayvon Alexis, and right off the bat, going right to the basket and scoring is Edward Perez, 2-0 Hilbert. Long pass back the other way for the Lions. They'll move the ball around, get it to Mason Bush, bounce pass to Braylon Cage, and it's almost stolen, knocked almost out of bounds, but it'll stay with the Lions. So a good start for Hilbert here. And now the Lions will inbound Kevin Woodland Jr. to Jamar White. White on the far side to Cage. Now back to Bush. Woodland Jr. And a shot clock violation and a turnover, so some really good defense there by Hilbert. Yeah, it seemed like Penn State Altoona didn't realize when the ball went out of bound that the shot clock still didn't adjust, right? It stayed right where it was, and I don't think they realized it, which is why they weren't driving towards the basket. Pompey to Perez, the back iron, no good. Cage gets the rebound, but we have a whistle and a foul. I think that's gonna go against Hilbert. And it that's on Sonny Williams, the first foul of the game. And now Hilbert putting on some full court pressure here. Inbounded to Bush with Perez on him. And now they'll back off as the Lions get it across the midcourt stripe. Bush. And he tried to get it to a teammate in the corner. He got it to Cage. His shot is short off the iron. Perez skies for the rebound. And Pompey brings it into the front court. Pompey still has it, dishes it off. Nice, oh, he missed the shot. Trayvon Alexis tried to get it home, but he couldn't do it and fell. And now back the other way, White for the Lions. White got the ball back, stolen. Taken away and driving toward the basket and scoring is Sonny Williams, 4-0 Hilbert. Nice play by Williams. Stole it, went the length of the court. White, Cage, banks it, no good. Rebound off of Trayvon Alexis and out of bounds. Bad break there, he couldn't hang on to the ball. Tell you, the one thing Coach is saying, if you're gonna go up and put that dunk, you get it down right there. Unfortunately, tried to go underneath the rim and then dunk it and didn't get himself up high enough to be able to put it down. And the Lions will inbound it. Three-pointer is no good. And coming down with the rebound is Karan Briggs. Briggs into the front court for the Hawks. He'll go right to the basket, put it up. It won't go. Alexis saves it, but eventually it gets knocked out of bounds. I had three nephews playing high school basketball, and I always told them, if you miss a dunk, you better hope I'm not at that game so I don't see it. <laughs> to the best of my knowledge, either they didn't dunk or I didn't miss it. <laughs> now the Lions with the ball. White into the front court for the Lions. Woodland Jr. now. Now Dwayne Jones underneath Bush gets it back out. To Cage into the corner it's Bush. And his pass to Woodland Jr. for three. Around and out. Perez gets the rebound. Gets it to Pompey into the front court. Briggs. Underneath the basket, turns, shoots, scores, six nothing Hilbert. Karan Briggs. Stu, that puts Briggs one point away from a thousand. Very cool, and Cage drives and scores. Excuse me, that's Jamal White. 
So it's a six to two game. We'll keep an eye on Briggs. And there's got to be a foul there. Which way is it going to go? I think it's going to go against the Lions. Because Perez was driving toward the basket. And that is the first team foul. On Dwayne Jones for the Lions. So Justin Pompey out of St. Francis High School here in Buffalo will inbound. And he'll get it back to Briggs. Far side, three-pointer off the iron, no good. And off the rebound, almost stolen by Alexis. And it'll be Lions ball. Jones. And the jump shot by Woodland Jr. is good. It's a six to four game. Men's game, two 20 minute halves. The women play the four 10 minute quarters. Pompey off the front rim, no good. Perez gets the rebound, good rebound there. Perez trapped, now he gets it back to Pompey. He's cut off by three different players. His bounce pass though to Perez, his shot is short. Rebound taken down by the Lions. Long pass up ahead for Jones. He saves it, gets it to Bush. He'll take a three. Off the iron, no good. Battle for the rebound. Pompey comes down with that one for the Hilbert Hawks into the front court. There's Karan Briggs. He'll dish it off to Perez. He'll put up a shot and score. They let him play there. Plenty of contact, eight to four Hilbert. I love the way Perez is playing early in this game. He really is being aggressive into the paint and also aggressive on the boards on both sides of the court. And there's a foul on Trayvon Alexis on Dwayne Jones. Alexis not quite getting the start he had hoped for. Yeah, you can see he didn't get positioning when he turned his body right there. That was where that foul comes into play. And we're gonna get some changes for the Hawks. Larry Morse, one of the players coming into the game along with Jamel Demery. And we'll let you know who else as we see him as the Lions look, they made some changes too. Justin Sheets catches the inbounds pass. Gets it to White, his shot is off the back rim, no good. Bush gets the rebound, now he lost it. And it comes to Pompey for Hilbert. Into the front court is Pompey. Far side, the three is off the iron by Shaheen Ellis. And underneath, battle for the loose ball. Who's got it? It's Hilbert. And now once again, it's Pompey. Shaheem Ellis doing a good job helping out on that. And Pompey dishes it down low. The shot is up and good by Jamel Demery. Make it 10 to four. Hilbert push into the front court. Bush drives, puts it up and in. He's one of the bigger players on the floor for either team. There's a gentleman on Altoona who's six foot eight, Jason Gardner. And when I looked out there, I say he looks more like a defensive end. And he knows it too, because when, <laughs> no, when I say that, you can see by the way he's leaning in on offense to be able to try to get his positioning. <laughs> Very well said, you caught me off guard with that one. <laughs> Here's Sheets, still got it. Now this is White. As everybody pauses, White gets a pick. Pompey guarding him, he spins, stops the dribble, sheets off the iron, no good. Demery comes down with the rebound for Hilbert and Pompey into the front court. The one thing Hilbert's done very well, given, given right now Penn State one shot opportunities. And we got a whistle and they're gonna call an offensive foul on Larry Morse. So it's 10 to what, six. What, was it an offensive foul or he went out of bounds? Uh, I think you're right away. He just went out yeah, of bounds. Yeah, he just went out of bounds yeah, is right. what happened right there. He hit but, the deck hard, I'll give you that. But, Stu, what you see Penn State so far, Altoona, they've only had one shot opportunities. They put one shot up, Hilbert gets the rebound and go. If you don't make it right away, that's the advantage right now that Hilbert has on the boards early on in this game. And offensive rebounds, they're giving themselves second chance opportunities. I really like what they've been doing especially rebounding early in this game. Nathan Moore and Kyrese Fisher come into the game for the Hawks. Oh, a nice block shot, but there's a foul. And that time they got Larry Morris for the foul. Looked like a block shot, but he got him, and that'll put 
Dwayne Jones at the free throw line. Well, and I thought Jones had great positioning. You see how Jones was actually, he was toward closer to the basket, and he absolutely had to make a play and kind of go over the top of him to be able to try to get that block shot right there. Jones misses the first free throw. And the second free throw is good to make it 10 to seven. And now Kyrese Fisher will send it back to Jamel Demery and his foot, his pass is off the foot of Michael Baskerville. So Hilbert will inbound the ball one more time. And Coach DeGrandpre right here, what he's done is, but he's done a lot of subbing early yeah. in this game. You're really seeing a lot of guys get into this early on. Yes, I was gonna ask you about that. Therese Fisher, near side, Nathan Moore, and there's a foul, and that's going to be on Jamar White. And coaches will do that early, especially when they want fresh legs. When they want this to be a fast-paced game, especially an up-and-down game, that's what you'll do to make sure fresh legs are always out there on the court. And it gets everybody involved and keeps everyone's attention up. Now Fisher... Into the corner, Nathan Moore with the back iron, no good. Battle for the rebound. White comes down with it for the Lions. He's into the front court. His bounce pass is knocked away. And here's Kyrie's Fisher back the other way, puts it up and in. Good defense there by Hilbert, leads to the bucket. It's a five point game. And the Lions almost threw it away. Fisher wreaking havoc. And there's a wide open three for Baskerville is good. He couldn't have been more wide open. And well, they do want to play this game at a fast pace, 12 yep. to 10 Hilbert. Especially when you want to do any sort of full court press. That's a great job to be able to sub in and out. So you're constantly having fresh people on the court to do it. And it's stolen, taken away by Dwayne Jones. And he's into the front court with the pass to White. Now Bush to Sheets for three, around and out. And Larry Morse comes down with the rebound. It's Kyrese Fisher into the front court for the Hawks. To Morse. Now it's Demery. His shot is off the rim. No good. And here comes the Lions the other way. Sheets puts it up. And there's a foul as he tried to do the alley oop for Jones. And he's a little bit upset. And he's restrained by Sheets. I don't think there was anything really intentional. No, there. he was going up for the dunk. And when people go up for the no. dunk and get grabbed, that's when they get upset that there's that when things can get, you know what I mean, ugly. Yeah, and now, then here we go. Like, let's. Now, why are they going toward the Hilbert bench? Well, I think they got, they're got they mad because players are just talking back and forth. I like the separation. Everybody's doing the right thing right now. Separate them out, right? No need to go any farther than this. Understand everybody's upset at this point, but I really like right now you got leaders on the court separating everybody out. Well, the only thing I didn't like is some of the Lions players went right over to the Hilbert bench. But remember, we don't know what was said, that's, that's right? True. We don't know what was said that caused somebody to do that. Nobody goes over and does anything for no reason at all. There's always two sides to every story. I always say that. You're right. Jones is at the free throw line for Penn State, Altoona. And it looks like there was at least one technical foul called here. Are these the free throws? He, yeah, it, he, there's no, no was one it else a, there. Was so it there, or what, did they call an intentional foul when he went up for uh, the dunk? Could be. That's yeah. what I think what happened, and we didn't really get a chance to see what was called because of the, uh, you know what I mean, the, the chaos that was going on out there on the court. He makes the first free throw, does Dwayne Jones, and he makes the second, and we're all tied at 12. So it appears that cooler heads have prevailed, fortunately. And there's the big man I was talking about, Jared Gardner, number 34. And this will be Penn State Altoona ball underneath the basket that they are attacking. And they inbound the ball to Bush. Bush cross court pass to Baskerville, who already has one three to Gardner. His shot is actually blocked, swatted away by Perez. And Fisher into the front court. He'll dish it off into the corner for three. No good. And Oh, wow, there was some action there. Here's Sheets all alone. And he dunks it and has a word or two. And just like that, Hilbert takes a timeout. Well, I didn't expect Sheets to be able to get up there and do that, but he did. And if we have a replay, we'll see it right here. 
Watch Sheets get up there. Holy cow. I wasn't expecting that, Tom. Well, he had the opening, right? And absolutely got the breakaway, took advantage of it. You know, but I'll tell you, right now, this is what I'm going to say is, this game has got a lot of intensity <laughs> early on in this one. Let's hope that we can keep things calm out there on the court. And this timeout is being brought to you by Empire Electric. And hopefully there's nothing shocking that happens in this game because, as you have mentioned, the intensity has been ratcheted up quickly after a hard foul that got the attention of both teams. And you notice that Mr. Gardner, all six foot eight of them, was put into the game right after that happened. And then he got a shot block by, by Parker. Parker. And I was going to say is he did right now to, to me, I thought unbelievable defense. I'm sorry, I said Parker Perez. I apologize. Perez, he was down low. He's outmatched. I want to say is he's giving almost 100 pounds away, <laughs> yeah. right? And yes. doing a great job down low of boxing out, keeping him down in the spot, and then really elevated to block that shot. I thought his defense was unbelievable. Me too. Fisher with the ball for Hilbert. He'll send it back to Ellis. Now right back to Fisher. And his pass goes off the leg of Baskerville, and it'll stay with Hilbert. They, they do not get a fresh shot clock. And Briggs who's within one, I think you said it was Briggs, one point of a thousand, yep. inbounds it to Shaheem Ellis. Ellis to Briggs, back to Ellis, and he'll take a three. Good. Shaheem Ellis, 15 to 14, Hilbert sheets into the front court. Penn State Altoona with the ball, the Sheets. It's high over his head, gets it out to Bush. He'll take a long range three and drain it. Mason Bush, big man, can shoot the three. And the lead goes back and forth. We're going to keep seeing this go back and forth today. This really could be another game out of the two that comes down to the very end. Ellis for three. Good. We're trading three pointers now. And it's 18 to 17. Hilbert push into the front court. And Gardner, the big man, hands it off to Elliot Johansson. Back to Gardner. Near side to Baskerville. Now Bush. Johansson, back to Bush. To Sheets into the corner. Baskerville off the iron, no good. Battle for the rebound. And I believe that's a foul on Johansson as Jamel Demery came away with the ball. I tell you, you know, one thing, Tom, uh, our old colleague Adam Benini said, if you're going to make a, make a mistake, make it with conviction. <laughs> well, these fouls are being made with conviction. <laughs> and I'll tell you, right now, Hilbert's going with a smaller lineup, as you see. I mean, we've seen Perez is playing right now in the middle of that zone at 6-4. Fisher. Into the corner, the three, good, and a foul! Teron Briggs nails the three, he's over a thousand points, and will go to the free throw line. How about that? Are they gonna stop the game here for a minute? And that's a one that deserves a replay right there. Well, congratulations to Karan Briggs. And he's getting a nice round of applause from the crowd, and some High five from his teammates, and I don't think we have a replay. But a great shot, and he was fouled. So he's got a free throw coming. I'll tell you, and that's going to be one you can remember, right? You could say, you're a thousand points. I put a three as I got knocked down to the ground. That's something that you can remember absolutely for a lifetime from there. And he makes the free throw, 22-17. That's like the line drive base hit for number 3,000, not the little dribbler down the third baseline. Oh, that was more that. like the home run after the three-pointer yeah. for the four-year 3,000. Gardner into the middle to, to number zero, Aiden Goodwin, who scores, make it 22 to 19. We're in the second half of the first half. Fisher near side to Ellis. Now Fisher back to Ellis. Briggs, who just passed 1,000. Ellis now to Fisher. And it's Briggs, he'll take the three. Good! Back-to-back -back threes. Karan Briggs, 25 to 19, Hilbert. 
So Hansen has it stolen. Oh, he got it back, had his pocket picked. We got all kinds of whistles. And who are they going to call this foul on? I See, think. it was a hold is what they said. And I, and I think it's actually going against. No, it's actually going against Hilbert is what it looks like. Wow. Okay. That's what they said. And it's going against number 13 Fisher on that one. Well, that looks like the big man Gardner. It will inbound the ball. And he'll get it to Johansson for the Lions. Now Sheets, who had a three earlier. Now Dwayne Jones to Gardner, the big man. He lost the handle, got it back, puts it up. No good. Briggs with the rebound. Pass ahead to Ellis. Hopefully Briggs is all right. Now Ellis dribbling. He gets it back to Briggs. Far side to Fisher. Into the corner. Coming out of there, putting it up. No good was Perez. Ball's knocked out of bounds. It'll go to the Lions. And we got the substitution here as Ezekiel Barning comes in. And that'll match the size of Mr. Gardner, which... It's going to be fun to watch down low. I'm going to tell you that right now. And Gardner's still bigger. <laughs> Sheets. Sheets puts up the jumper short off the iron. Rebound taken down by Ellis to Briggs. He'll go right to the basket, put it up, and in for Ron Briggs. I think that's eight straight points, nine straight, yeah, counting he, he the He really has been on fire. Counting the free, the free throw, I think that's nine straight. Johansson with the bounce pass, stolen by Briggs. Briggs will go right to the bucket, put it up, and in. Make it 11 straight for Briggs. A 10-point lead for Hilbert, 29-19. And there's a timeout on the floor, and this timeout is brought to you by Western New York Immediate Care. What a stretch, a big opportunity for Hilbert. We'll take a break, 29-19, Hilbert leading Penn State Altoona, 8.19 to go in the first half, and you are watching Hilbert College Basketball on Buffalo Sports Page. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com, our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in Western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream. Learn more at comfortplastics.com. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company. And now Hilbert putting on a little bit of a full-court press here. Kevin Woodland, Jr. into the front court, hands it off to Sheets. Sheets back to White. Oh, oh how did that happen? So we have Edward Perez, and who, is that Sheets on the bottom of that? They collided. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's Justin Sheets. I think they're calling that on Perez. They are. And somehow they collided. They both Perez, hit the Perez deck. was saying he got taken down is what he was yeah. saying out there. That's why he was grabbing at his uh, arm, saying he got taken down with him. Ah, uh, the old he took me down <laughs> with him <laughs> trick, but they didn't buy it. And it is Penn State Altoona ball. They got to get it in here, and they did not. And that's a turnover. That's a very bad turnover. Jamar White couldn't find good defense, couldn't find a teammate. And it's Hilbert by 10, and Justin Pompey back into the game now. So Pompey into the front court. Out of Perez. And Briggs, he'll put up a shot, and that one's short. And battle for the rebound, controlled by Hilbert. Pompey to Briggs, and he gets bumped. I don't know, he got bumped out of bounds there, but there's no call. Back the other way, White puts it up and in. Jamar White. And it's 29-21. Into the front court, Shaheem Ellis. Now Justin Pompey. Pompey back to Ellis, now Pompey. Pompey, short jump shot off the front of the rim, no good, and the Lions get the rebound. Dwayne Jones into the front court, and he'll hand it off to Jamar White. 
Pompey, oh, and that's going to be a foul on Pompey. He, he bumped him, and that one you couldn't help but notice. Yeah, I mean, especially when it's out in the <laughs> open court like that, right? But I'll tell you, what I really believe the biggest reason for this lead has been the defense of Hilbert, but really in, inside the defense has been rebounding. I mean, they really have been crashing the boards. Even when they were in an undersized lineup, they were still winning the rebounds right there, and that's, to me, the biggest reason for this lead. Jamar White makes the first free throw. Make it 29-22. And he'll get another free throw. Seven fouls on the Hawks here in the, already. And the second free throw is also good to make it 29-23. Pompey. And now we're getting some pressure from the Lions into the front court to Briggs. Back to Pompey. And Pompey into the corner to Ellis. Sheets up in the air. The shot is missed. Tipped up. Controlled by Kevin Woodland Jr. for the Lions. And now Dwayne Jones into the front court, near side to White. He'll put up a three off the iron, no good. And it's Ellis with the rebound. Sheets guarding him, he'll go right up, put it up, no good. Tipped up and in by Trayvon Alexis. Big play there by Alexis. And now it's White the other way for the Lions. Dwayne Jones right down the lane, puts it up, missed the layup, but he does draw the foul. And I'll be honest, I thought he took an extra step, but my opinion does not matter. He did draw the foul. It is 31-23, Hilbert. Quite a game here, Tom. We got another another one brewing, yeah. don't we? And the pace of this game yeah. has really been unbelievable to watch. It really hasn't stopped the pace of this game, which is why we actually saw, right, so many different lineups come in and out. We're seeing it again, right? We've really seen Hilbert use their bench really to their advantage so far in this game. Right, you can look at any guy that's on the bench that already has a, you know, just their jersey on, right, that's not wearing some sort of sweatshirt. Look at, you've got one, two, three, four, five guys, a whole team that's already been into this game. Both free throws were good, making it 31-25 into the front court. Shaheem Ellis, short jump shot is good. Nice play there by Ellis over everybody, 33-25, Hilbert. Ellis, another one who's been hot, right? Had those big three-pointers. Now he's into the into the paint making some points. He's really been big in this game. Bush to Sheets. And he has it stolen, but he gets it back. He slips and falls. And somehow Dwayne Jones gets it back. Stolen this time by Pompey for Hilbert into the front court. Back to Pompey. Bounce pass. They got a little too ambitious there. Passed a little too much for Demery. And... That was one of those situations where you just want to easy does it, but I think they're excited about getting that bucket. Got a little carried away there. Ronnie Lewis into the game now for Hilbert as another player comes in. And Bush will inbound to White. Pompey guarding White as he brings it across the timeline. White to Bush. And he hands it off to Aiden Goodwin into the game. Goodwin now gets a pick, puts up the shot, and scores. Aiden Goodwin, 33-27. Hilbert in the lead. Pompey on, on the far side. We hope you're enjoying today's Hilbert College doubleheader here on the Buffalo Sports page. Stu Boyer along with Tom Prince bringing you the action. And nice little passing play, and Demery gets the roll. Wow. How about that? Jamal Demery, the bucket and the foul. And if we have a replay, we'll get another look at that one to make it 35-27. There's the replay coming right there. Good passing by Gilbert. And the bucket and the foul. Nicely done there. And Demery is at the free throw line. Stu, I really think, too, having 12, when do you, have you seen or done a college game where 12 guys got into a game in the first half with still five minutes left to go. I'm going to say probably never. I mean, it, it very infrequent is what I, I'm going to say right there. And the only time you might see it is on senior day when they start all the seniors. Yeah, Other I mean, that, unbelievable never. the way he uses his bench. And that's a great thing because it keeps everybody involved. Yep. And the shot is no good and Shaheem Ellis comes down with the rebound. 
Pompey now drives right down the lane, lays it up, no good, tip, no good. Demery gets the rebound to Shaheem Ellis for three. No good, and Nathan Moore hits the deck at getting that rebound, and there's a foul there, and that's on the Penn State Lions, Penn State Altoona Lions, and the ball will stay with Hilbert. Pompey will inbound for Hilbert. I thought it was on Bush right there for Penn yep, State. You're right, his second. And there's a dish underneath. They'll save it to Demery, and Demery pushes forward, puts up a shot, no good. Oh, look at Nathan Moore get that rebound to Shaheem Ellis. He'll get it to Moore one more time for three. Good. Nathan Moore. And it's 38 27. The lead is 11 for Hilbert. Moore, you keep getting those offensive rebounds, we'll feed you when you get the open shot, is exactly what his teammates say. Now push into the front court for the Lions. Under four minutes remaining in the first half. White dribbling. White looking for an opening, gets it back to Bush. Thought about the long range three. He'll lob it in to Dwayne Jones, he'll get it back. Bush drives. And he's clobbered. Oh. oh, that had to hurt. That's a blocking foul on Hilbert, and Bush is down. The foul on Nathan Moore is about half the size of Mason Bush. And the bigger they are, the harder they fall. He really hit the deck hard. Gets a hand up from Justin Pompey. Big time foul there. And Bush is letting the officials know what he thinks about it. Is he? he Maybe he's lobbying for a flagrant foul or something. Well, he didn't like something, and, and 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 again, there's been a couple fouls that they don't like something. But you could see is yeah. Now one of the you know they're talking right now to uh, Nathan Moore. Wow. So Bush is at the free throw line. First free throw is good. Well. Mason Bush had a smile on his face, <laughs> so couldn't have been too upset. Well, maybe it was a wry grin instead of a smile. So he's got another free throw coming here as we have Briggs back into the game for Hilbert. Second free throw is also good, 38-29 in favor of Hilbert. As Pompey will bring it into the front court. Pompey drives and has it knocked out of bounds by Braylon Cage. It'll stay with the Hawks. 19 seconds left on the shot clock. Shaheem Ellis will inbound for Hilbert. Looking for an open teammate and he'll get it to Perez. He'll get the ball right back. Now Pompey, he got a whistle. And the referee on the far side blew his whistle. And they got to reset one of the clocks. Oh, because the shot clock never started. Stuck at 19, now it's down to 15. So it'll be Shaheem Ellis inbounding the ball for Hilbert, looking for a teammate, gets it to Demery. Goodwin guarding him. Demery to Pompey, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Pompey stops his dribble, gets it to Shaheem Ellis, into the corner. It's Perez, he'll put up a shot off the iron, no good. Mason Bush gets the rebound for the Lions. Bush into the front court, Demery guarding him. Cross court pass to Johansson, back out to Goodwin, into Dwayne Jones, off his hands, comes to Justin Pompey, and he'll kick it out to Shaheem Ellis. His shot is no good. Battle for the rebound put up and in by Jamal Demery to make it 40 to 29. And the whistle blows. We've got some more substitutions coming. Coming. Second quarter being brought to you by the U.S. Army. And it'll be Lions ball. We got some more changes. Sonny Williams and Kyrie Fisher back into the game. Goodwin goes out. And Kevin Woodland Jr. comes in for the Lions. As now we've got some pressure in the front court by Hilbert. And they'll get it into Johansson with Kyrie Fisher guarding him. Johansson dribbles into the front court, keeps his dribble. Fisher guarding him. 
Bounce pass to Dwayne Jones, to Bush. Bush to Dwayne Jones, he'll put it on the floor. He'll put it up and in. Dwayne Jones doing a nice job there in scoring 40 to 31. That's tough when you're that low right down in the paint to be able to stop right now a player from going in and getting it up for the points. Sonny Williams now for Hilbert. Back to Kyrie Fisher. Now Williams almost, they almost threw it away there. Here's Fisher. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Fisher to Briggs in the corner. No good, that one missed. Goes out of bounds, It'll, it must have been knocked out by a Penn State player. Only three seconds left on the shot clock because that one didn't hit anything. And it'll be a chance for the Hawks to inbound. Sonny Williams to inbound with Braylon Cage guarding him. Bounce pass to Perez. They gotta get a shot off Demery. No good. And Tyrese Fisher and Kevin Woodland Jr. with a little battle there. Pass knocked out of bounds by Demery. It'll stay with the Lions. 1.41 to go in the first half. Hilbert by nine. And Ronnie Lewis comes back into the game as Edward Perez goes out. It's been a very entertaining first half. Really has, especially the pace. I mean, it has just been a really quick, fast pace the entire first half. Bounce pass to Bush. Bush back to Jones. He'll put up a three on the way. No good. Carice Fisher comes down with the rebound into the front court. He goes. Fisher. Far side. And now Fisher gets the three-pointer. Hits the rim. No good. Woodland Jr. comes down with the rebound. And into the front court they go. Johansson the short jump shot. No good. Off the back iron. Briggs gets the rebound. Coming up on the one-minute mark of the first half. Nine-point lead for Hilbert. Tyrese Fisher, they want to work the clock a little bit here apparently, 18 seconds on the shot clock. Teron Briggs driving, he'll put up a shot, no good but a whistle and a foul. And that'll go against Penn State Altoona and Briggs will go back to the free throw line. So Stu, think about the pace that we've seen here. When's the last time that you actually saw Penn State Altoona have a second chance opportunity to put points up on the board. I don't think that we've seen too much of that. It I don't really has. That. that just shows how aggressive Hilbert's been on the boards, right? That's really where they've been winning this game, is really on those rebounds. Now flip it to the other side. How many times have we talked about Hilbert getting a second or a third chance opportunity on the other side? A lot. Right? Yeah, that's, that's really that's the, the game, right? That's the difference in the game. Because that's what you're looking at right there. And then if you want to keep this fast pace up, Coach is going to keep doing exactly what he does and keep taking these 12 players and rotating them in and out of the lineup. We should really see and expect to see that the second half. Briggs makes one out of two free throws. Nathan Moore comes back into the game as Briggs goes out. Just under 49 seconds to play here in the first half. Hilbert by 10. And now this is Johansson with the ball for the Lions. Tyrese Fisher comes out to guard him. Johansson gets it to Dwayne Jones. He'll drive down the lane. He'll spin. He'll shoot and score. Well, when Dwayne Jones does that, he's very difficult to stop. Well, especially that low in the plane, right? And the way he elevates up, too. He gets a great job of elevating up over his defender so he can get those shots up and off the glass. There's a timeout taken. By, and this timeout is brought to you by Empire Electric. Just, uh, just over 25 seconds to play. The Hilbert women lost today in overtime to Penn State Altoona, 79-74. Just giving the final score doesn't do that game justice. No. It, it was a fabulous game. And we have a, as Tom has mentioned several times, a game being played at a breakneck pace here from the opening tip. And Hilbert with a 41-33 lead. Now, obviously, in that first game, we weren't out on the court. I can't tell you anything that was said. I never saw a coach get animated at all, right? Now, I don't know what she said or anything like that, but never saw her get animated. For me to see a tech call that late in the game that's going to decide the game, boy, there better have been something egregious done out there on the court. You know, one of the people at the scorer's table told me that one of the officials had told her to stop talking. 
I don't know if that's true or not. You know, listen, talking's one thing, right? I never saw her get animated uh, unless she was getting animated with one of her players. Yeah. Right? I didn't think Coach Bullock, you know what I mean, as far as that said, you know, really was was over the top. No, but I'm not down in the court, and I don't know what words were used. That's the biggest difference, right? You are correct, as usual. Maurice Fisher, final 20 seconds of the first half to Sonny Williams. Final 15 seconds of the first half. Williams dribbling. We're in the final 10 seconds here. Williams looking for a shot. He'll drive. Power through the lane. Shot won't fall. Ball loose on the floor. Taken away by Jones. He won't get a shot off, and that'll bring the first half to a close. So what a first half. Hilbert leads this one 41-33 at halftime. And this has been brought to you by the U.S. Army. So that'll do it. What a great half, Tom. You, really, you couldn't ask for much more. No, I really can't. And I'm going to say rebounds, 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 and rebounds. And that's really, to me, the biggest difference right here. And for Hilbert to keep this lead and for Hilbert to make sure that they have this first half to be exactly like the second half, that's where they really got to make sure they keep doing and making sure that you know Penn State Altoona does not get the second chance opportunities that if they do and they're capable of because we know there's a height advantage on some of these lineups out there, that could easily turn and change this game around in a different direction. Well, that'll do it for the first half. Heidi Gunther is our producer, Russ Battaglia our photographer, and of course Tom Prince is our great color man. My name is Stu Boyer. It's halftime. Hilbert leads this one 41 to 33, and you are watching Hilbert Hawks College Basketball on Buffalo Sports Page. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tank goes down? Covered under property damage. And you see this is all under one policy? One policy. When do I pay? Once a month. Just one time? Just one. Is there anything you don't cover? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 31. Tables. We don't do tables. Gotta love Buffalo. For more information, visit www.paulwolfagency.com. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient, personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. You're watching another live stream production by 300 Level Media LLC. 300 Level Media can highlight your business by incorporating commercials, live reads, and corporate logos throughout our WNY Athletics events. WNY Athletics is the premier high school sports streaming service in New York State. Covering regular season contests through the state championships and everything in between with over a million views annually. You can find more information about advertising on any of our platforms at WNYAthletics.com slash become a sponsor. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at LeisureAccents.com 
our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com. And know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in Western New York. Confer Plastics, a believer in the American dream. Learn more at ConferPlastics.com or like us on Facebook. Hi, my name is Lisa Roosevelt, owner of the Rose Barn Grill, located at 199 Scott Street, downtown Buffalo, in the heart of the city. Great place, friendly atmosphere, have great drinks, have great food, and we have awesome customers. If you come to the Rose, I guarantee you, you're coming back.
Welcome back to Hilbert, where the Hawks have a 41-33 lead over the Lions from Penn State Altoona. Quite a first half, Tom, as you had mentioned, paid, played at a breakneck pace. And we got some guys filling up the basket. We had Karan Briggs surpass 1,000 points for his career. And I think, I think he had 11 straight points very unofficially during that first quarter. Well, he's got 14 half. overall is where he, and he's the leading scorer in the entire game right now. He's got 14 points. The second score, top scorer for Hilbert is Shaheem Ellis with eight. And then at six points is Jamel uh, Demery. He's got six. And then at four points is Perez. So those are your leading scores for Hilbert. Flip on the other side for Penn State Altoona. Dwayne Jones has got nine points, and Jamar White has got six, and Aiden Goodwin has got four. Oh, I'm sorry, and Mason Bush has got seven. Those are your leading scorers right there um, for uh, Penn State Altoona in this one. Well, this game started off literally with a bang, a big, big time collision within the first, what, three minutes. Yeah, it really little, was. A little bit of jawing back and forth, and fortunately, cooler heads have prevailed, and we've got ourselves quite a basketball game, and as you see, number 34, Jared Gardner walking back across toward the Penn State Altoona bench. I, I was watching the warm-ups, and I, I noticed him, and I said, he looks more like a defensive end than a basketball player. He's a big man at 6'8". I didn't even say offensive tackle is yeah, what I'd too. say on that one. Yeah, that too. But, but uh, uh, one stat I kept talking about in the first yes. half. Listen to this one. For Penn State Altoona, offensive rebounds, they have one. Oh, wow. Well, there it is. You're okay. right. And then Hilbert's got nine. Right there, when you're talking about eight more second chance opportunities... With an eight point difference right there, that's one of the biggest things that you're gonna see here inside this game. That was one thing you saw loud and clear to me that stood out so far as the difference in this game and one of the reasons for the lead for Hilbert. So their inside play has been better than Penn State Altoona. And as you always mentioned, the shots from the outside at some point you're gonna start missing but inside, you got a much better chance at finishing. But now let's flip. What's an advantage for Penn State versus Hilbert? Free throws for Penn State. They're 9 out of 10 for 90% so far in the first half. Hilbert only 2 for 4 for 50%. Now, granted, a much smaller size, but you can see Altoona got to the line much more than what Hilbert got to the line. And that really could you you could be talking about was one of the reasons that kept Penn State Altoona inside this inside this game. And I know we've done it, but it's worth repeating. Karan Briggs over a thousand points for his career here at Hilbert, and he made that jump on a three-point shot, and he was fouled. He was one point away when he banged down the three-pointer and threw the foul, and he completed the four-point play. So, quite a memorable way to record your the 1,000th point of your career, so congratulations to Karan Briggs, and now if he really wants to celebrate, he and his teammates will find a way to come out of here win, with a right. win. The other thing, too, we talked about was how Hilbert was effectively using their bench. Yes. So Hilbert, 12 players inside this game. Right now, one has only had one minute, but we've had as much as uh, 15 for the top, three for there for the others. Um, and then, you know, Penn State Altoona still use 10 players themselves. So both coaches effectively using their bench and getting players inside to this game. And I really believe that both teams had to do that, especially because of the frantic pace that we saw throughout this entire game. And there's no way that I think any player could have really kept up that pace for the entire game. I, I totally agree with that. And of course, the officials for this one Anthony Zimbardi, Ron Higgins, and Terry Gleason have been busy right off the bat. They had to keep a lid on it, and it has been a physical game, and I do think you would agree that for the most part they have let them play, and they did a real fine job right near the beginning of the game with a gigantic collision, and they kept the lid on this one. So now the teams have switched ends. Penn State Altoona will get the ball to start the second half. Raylan Cage will inbound. 
and he will get it to Jamar White. And the second half is underway. Hilbert leading by eight. Bush on the far side. Near side. Now right back to Bush. Takes a long range three and drains it. That was a downtown three. A three from way downtown. 41-36. What a way to start the second half for Penn State Altoona. Now, and there's a replay of it, as you see. There's Justin Pompey to Karan Briggs to Trayvon Lewis. And they'll look to dump it down low to Lewis, and he scores. Nice play. Good pass there from Perez. Make it 43-36. So both teams scoring on their first possessions here in the second half. On the near side, Braylon Cage. Now Jamar White. Cage, he'll put up a three. Good. No doubt about that one. 43-39. Well, both these teams can score in a whole bunch of different ways, and we've seen it. And we'll see more of it as this one promises to... It looks like a, here's Perez driving toward the basket, puts it up and in. Nicely done by Edward Perez. 45-39. How about Altoona, though? Two for 10 from three-point land in the first half. 20% comes out and hits their first two threes. <laughs> Isn't that how it works, right? And, oh, there's a dunk by Dwayne Jones. Dwayne is very dangerous around the basket, to say the least. And there, if we have a replay, we'll see it. There it is. Pompey with the ball now for the Hawks. Bounce pass stolen. Nice steal there by Woodland Jr. for Penn State Altoona. Here's Bush. He's going to take another long range three and drain it. 45 44. Mason Bush says, Give me that ball. I can hit from anywhere. And he's got back to back threes to start the second half. And there's a timeout on the floor. This timeout is brought to you by Empire Electric. Wow. Well, I would say it's an electric start to the second half. <laughs> Suddenly it's a one-point game. Mason Bush, how Hold about on. that? He, I can't gloss over you saying that one. Sorry. <laughs> you, you sat perfectly right oh. into it. <laughs> yeah, I, so Tony Pulveretti would love the fact that you use the end right there, uh, the electric right there is the start. Well, I mean, the big man, Mason Bush, I think he has three threes on the game. I think he had one in the first half. And, and those were not threes from just outside no. the line. They Agreed. were from downtown. But what that could possibly do for Penn State, we're going to see if now Hilbert tries to come out farther and guard that. Because if you do, it's going to open up that middle a little bit for Penn State. And especially with some of the size they have down low, could that be an advantage if they can hit these threes and open up down low for them to be able to take advantage of it, especially as this game goes down the road. So the Hawks will inbound. They're now attacking the basket to our left as Penn State Altoona is attacking the basket to our right. Hilbert in their home white uniforms and Altoona in their road blues. Now Pompey in there. Look at that. Mason Bush way up in the front court. Pompey brings it across the timeline to Sonny Williams. Now back to Pompey. Now Williams in the corner. Pompey one more time. Pompey cross court to Williams. And now Perez, and he's fouled by Kevin Woodland Jr. as he tried to drive the baseline. A blocking foul is called. So the Hawks will inbound. First foul of the second half here. And Hilbert looking to get an inbounds. Gets it to Briggs, lays it up and in. Karan Briggs, nice play there. And now it's Jamal, Jamar White. Mason Bush, will he look for another three? Kevin Woodland Jr. powers toward the basket, stops. Gets it out to Braylon Cage, now White. 13 on the shot clock, White. Near side, Cage for three. Off the iron, no good. Perez skies for the rebound and gets it to Pompey. Pompey to Briggs. He'll dish it off to uh, uh, Trayvon Alexis. And the ball's stolen, comes back the other way to White. 
White, Bush thought about the three, couldn't get the shot off, dish it down low to White. His short jumper is no good. Ball's tipped up in the air and battle for the rebound. Here's Bush for another. Oh, I thought he's going to take a long range three. Instead, Cage will take the three off the iron. No good. Briggs chips it up in the air. Perez comes down with it. And here's Pompey. And he'll drive right down the lane, put it up. No good. Trayvon Alexis has his shot blocked. White ahead to Woodland. And he'll bank it up, and it won't fall, but there's a foul on Sonny Williams. So back and forth, both teams hitting shots earlier in the half and then miss, and that'll put Kevin Woodland Jr. on the free throw line. It's a two-shot foul. First foul of the second half on the Hawks. And Woodland. Misses the first free throw, stays a three-point game. And it's funny, the thing they had to work on in the f from the first half to second half was <laughs> three-point uh, percentage. They did it, but then flipped it on as far as free throws percentage. So they were nine for 10, 90% so far in the first half. So it's kind of like the three-pointers and the free yeah, throws just switched. Flipped. Second free throw is good, and it's a two-point game now. Now the Lions putting some... Full court pressure on, ahead to Briggs, into the front court he goes. Out of Pompey. Pompey maintains his dribble. Gets it to Shaheem Ellis, back to Pompey. Bounce pass to Perez, his shot is around and in. Edward Perez got the roll there. Make it 49-45. Now White drives, his drive is cut off. Dish nicely done there. And it's Woodland Jr. getting the bucket. Good passing there. Good work by Penn State Altoona to make it a two-point game. And here's Pompey off the iron. No good. White gets the rebound. That was Jones with that pass, by the way. That was a phenomenal pass by him. And that shot is no good. But look at him hustle for the rebound. And Perez gets the rebound as Dwayne Jones couldn't get the ball to fall. Into the front court, it's Briggs. Now Perez, now Pompey. Pompey sends it back to Perez. He spins, lays it up and in. Nicely done by Edward Perez. Quick pass into the front court to Cage. To wait for his teammates to get up there with him. Now into the corner on the far side, Woodlands Jr. to Cage. Now White. Woodlands Jr. one more time. Gives it to Cage, he's in the corner. Bush, Bush, driving. Oh, nice move, puts it up, won't go. Perez gets the roll. Perez got the rebound, Bush took it away. There's a whistle and a foul. And I think that might be on Bush. And he, I don't think he cared for that call. He didn't, in fact, what he was trying to even express is, why isn't the, the rep down low calling oh, it? That's what he was trying to express out there. As you saw him constantly pointing to the rep that was down low right next to the play. And that's the third foul on Mason Bush. And it's Hilbert Ball, Fisher now, into the front court to Ellis, into the corner to Nathan Moore. Now they'll get it out one more time to Fisher. Ellis, Moore, and his pass for Perez, banked up and in, nicely done. Perez having a strong game, good pass there, and he finished, 53-47. Here's White. Therese Fisher guarding him. 15 seconds on the shot clock. White to Bush. Bush on the far side to Cage. Cage down low for Jones. Back to Cage for three, around and out. Perez skies for the rebound and gets it to Kyrie's Fisher. Wearing number 13, not all players will wear that number. Fisher, cut off by White, now he'll drive, kick it out to Nathan Moore, makes a move, the jump shot is good. Nathan Moore, 55-47 Hilbert. Everybody getting into the act for Hilbert. Wayne Jones now. Kevin Woodland Jr. Here's Bush, long range three. Off the iron, no good. Perez gets the rebound for Hilbert, and it's Kyrie Fisher back the other way. Fisher pulls it out. 
Gives his teammates a chance to set up the offense. Fisher to Nathan Moore. Demery around and out, no good, and the ball goes off of Jam Jamar White, and it'll stay with Hilbert. To, to me, threes come in bunches, right? They happen all the time. You never see a team that is hot usually from three all game long, right? It's the team that's going to win the battle in the paint and get those easy points that usually are the ones that come out big. To me, Penn State Altoona comes out with those three points, but look, at, it's been inside and Perez getting all those points right now and the reason why Hilbert keeps that lead where it is. Oh, that shot is blocked by Dwayne Jones. Pass up ahead for Sheets. And Sheets back to White. Now Jones. Jones puts the ball on the floor, puts a shot up, no good. Demery gets the rebound and it's Kyrie's Fisher. To Ellis. Our side to Nathan Moore. Bounce pass to Demery, stolen by Sheets. And he's cut off and fouled. And I'm not sure if that's on Moore or Demery. We'll find out. I believe that's on Nathan Moore. It's his, his third. And now Kevin Woodland Jr. will inbound to Jamar White. Under 13 minutes remaining in the second half. 55-47, Hilbert. Oh, that's quite a pick. <laughs> nice pass and a dunk. Nicely done there by Dwayne Jones. Uh, down low, he is he is a handful. Especially when you're right at the basket. How are you going to stop that? I don't care who you are, right? Yes, you are correct. Nathan Moore. To Ronnie Lewis. Lewis spins. Pushes it off to Demery. His shot is good. Short jump shot there. 57-49. White into the front court. Stops, takes the three, around and out, and Shaheem Ellis comes down with the rebound. Ellis to Moore. Fisher now. Reese Fisher. Ten seconds on the shot clock to Demery. His pass is off the hands of Ronnie Lewis and taken away. And here's Sheets into the front court. Thought he took an extra step there. Now he'll get the shot away. Won't go. And Fisher comes down with the rebound. So the Lions come up empty there after the turnover. Fisher and Moore. Moore to Ronnie Lewis. He'll take a jump shot. And it's around and out. Oh, look at the hustle by Nathan Moore. Ball's on the floor. It's a tie-up. And the arrow says it stays with Hilbert, and it does. Great effort there. We're gonna have uh, more substitutions here as Perez and Briggs come in. Moore and Lewis go out for the Hawks. And, and I like this substitution because I do believe two, these are two of your hottest players right now in Briggs and Perez, and they have to be out on the floor. So Hilbert will inbound. And they'll inbound it to Demery. The shot won't go. Goodwin comes down with the rebound, and there's a foul. That's going to be on Perez. It'll be a reach-in foul. And then Perez, that's his second foul. So I guess he didn't get all ball. Got a piece of the player. <laughs> And they'll inbound it, get it back to Michael Baskerville. Baskerville into the front court. Now Sheets back to, to uh, Jones. Wayne Jones stops his dribble, hands it off to Goodwin. Now coming out of the corner. And it's Dwayne Jones one more time with the ball. Jones puts it on the floor, and I think there's a foul. He got hit on the hand as he was handling the ball. And I, Really don't think you have a complaint about that call either because he did get hit. As the fourth foul on Hilbert. First foul on Shaheem Ellis. And we have a timeout taken. This timeout is brought to you by Western New York Immediate Care. And we're going to take a quick break here. 10.41 to play. It is Hilbert 57, Penn State Altoona 49. And you are watching Hilbert College 
basketball on Buffalo Sports Page. We're back at Hilbert College where the Hawks lead Penn State Altoona 57 49 with 10 41 to play here in the second half and Johansson will inbound for the Lions. Lions looking to cut into that lead. He will inbound it and Sheets will put up a shot. No good. And two Hilbert players Perez and Briggs going after the ball and it went off one of one of them. There was no there was no Penn State Altoona player near them, but obviously they couldn't tell. And it's knocked out of bounds, so the Lions will get another shot at it. They'll inbound it to Dwayne Jones. Jones puts it on the floor, spins, gets it to Goodwin. Goodwin back to Jones, takes the wide open jumper, no good. And Briggs gets the rebound for Hilbert, and Fisher is into the front court. Tyrese Fisher. Stops his dribble, gets it to Lewis. His shot is no good. Perez almost had the rebound. Excuse me, that was uh, Trayvon Alexis. Now here's Dwayne Jones. And are they gonna call that on Alexis? I believe they are. I wanna say that's gonna be his third too. I think you're right. For a brief moment, I thought it might have been an offensive foul. Obviously not. And Gardner and Bush come back in for the Lions. Goodwin goes out. Well, with Gardner and Bush on the floor, I think we'll see Hilbert come get a little bit bigger lineup in there. Ronnie Lewis back into the game. I'll get it to Bush. He thought about the three. Now he'll send it cross court to Baskerville. And they'll try to bounce it off a Hilbert player, but it goes right to Briggs. He'll drive down the length of the floor and score. Karan Briggs, good break for Hilbert. They tried the play where he bounced the ball off the opposition's leg, and it didn't work. Baskerville now. The Bush. Into the corner. Oh, what a great interception there by Shaheem Ellis. He intercepted that pass. He's looking for a player in the corner, and Ellis just leaped and picked it off. Perez now to Fisher. Bounce pass to Perez and he's hacked and will go to the free throw line. The ball didn't drop through the hoop, but he will go to the free throw line as it's a 10 point lead now for Hilbert. And the Hawks will try to add to it with Edward Perez at the free throw line. The first free throw is good. Fisher and Briggs having a conversation with Rob de Crompre. Second free throw is good. It was a quick conversation. And now Johansson back to Gardner. The big man, oh, they wanted to travel. Hilbert wanted to travel. And the reps, he's shaking his head no. He absolutely shook his head no, it was not. And there's a long pass for Gardner, tipped up in the air. And it'll stay with the Lions. Johansson will inbound. Ronnie Lewis guarding Gardner, the big man. They get it in to Gardner, puts it on the floor, puts it up, and in. Well, if he could do that 10 times a game, 
He'd average at least 20 points a game. <laughs> uh, well, and you saw they've been doing a good job of keeping him out, right? And I love before, I love when Perez was on him, actually, if you remember. Yes. Briggs now into the corner for Demery. Excuse me, that was uh, Ellis. And a steal, briefly, by Kyrese Fisher. Instead, the ball goes out of bounds. And now we'll get Johansson going out and White coming back in for the Lions. Briggs to inbound for Hilbert. Hawks with a 10-point lead, 8.35 to play. Fisher now. Takes a long range two, no good. Tipped up in the air, Gardner though. Overpowered everybody to get that rebound. Here's White driving on Fisher. He stops his drive, sends it back to Bush. Far side to Baskerville, he'll drive and he's fouled. And I believe that's on Briggs. He got hit on the hand. 36 fouls on Hilbert, right, yeah. with eight minutes still left. So they're going one and one, right, the next foul right here for Penn State Altoona. So the foul is the third of the game on Edward Perez. Baskerville the inbound. To Bush, he'll pass it to Gardner. Gardner tried to power his way toward the basket and did, the shot wouldn't go. Bush gets the rebound. His shot is no good, but he does draw another foul. Well, those two guys down low have a big time size advantage. Yeah, I think there's gotta be an adjustment right here for Hilbert. They've gotta make sure they've got an answer down low for Gardner. And obviously, you know what I mean, we thought there was gonna be a great matchup right there with Alexis down low. And with him getting three foul, his third foul, they took him out. They have been able to keep this 10 point lead right here, but I think you're gonna have to think about bringing him back in and go for that one-on-one -on -one matchup or make the move that they did earlier. I liked when I saw Perez on him because of the positioning that he got and made sure where he was that he couldn't get into the paint or if he did, he could get a hand in there still to be able to try to stop it defensively. Bush made one of two free throws, 61-52. Shaheem Ellis with the ball. Bounce pass into the corner to Fisher. He'll send it out to Briggs. Ooh, a blocking foul is called on Jamar White. Big time collision there with Karan Briggs. As, as the physicality of this game. Now that was established right off the opening yeah. tip off. That this was gonna be a physical game. And now Justin Pompey will inbound. Oh no, Justin Pompey will not inbound this. This will be Shaheem Ellis. Ellis looking for a teammate and he'll get it into Perez. He'll hand it right back to Ellis. Now Pompey. Pompey will drive, dish it off to Perez. His shot is blocked, put back up and in by Demery after Gardner blocked the original shot. Here's Bush and he'll dump it down low to Gardner and Gardner will put it up and in gently. Well, I don't know if you saw the defensive players backed away on that one. You didn't want to get a foul, though. No. I mean, because he was so close to the basket, all it would have been was a foul. Yes, you are correct. 63-54. Now Shaheem Ellis. Gardner way out there. Pompey to Perez. He's double teamed, and the ball almost knocked away by Bush. The three is up and good by Shaheem Ellis. Big shot there, and that'll get a timeout. 66-54, Hilbert. And this timeout is brought to you by the U.S. Army. We're going to take a quick break. It is Hilbert 66, Penn State Altoona 54, and you are watching Hilbert Hawks College Basketball on Buffalo Sports Page.
6.57 showing on the clock. Hilbert with a 12-point lead. Stu Boyer along with Tom Prince bringing you our Hilbert Hawks doubleheader today on Buffalo Sports page. Women lost a heartbreaker in overtime, 79-74. And the men trying to come away with a win today will be Penn State Altoona's ball to coming out of this timeout. Pompey putting a little bit of pressure on in the front court comes to Bush. They'll send it back to Gardner, Gardner to White. Gardner way out away from the basket. That's a good spot to keep him. Baskerville to Bush. Now White as Gardner's inside and powering his way toward the basket. White short jump shot off the iron, no good. Put up and in by Baskerville to make it 66-56. It's a 10-point lead for Hilbert. Gardner did open up that lane, got them the opportunity to get an easy shot right there because of how Gardner's pushing his guy right out. Pompey now for Hilbert. Shaheem Ellis. Bounce pass into the corner, goes, doesn't get to Karan Briggs, and that'll go off of Hilbert. It'll be a turnover, and it'll be Lions ball. I, boy, I, I gotta tell you, I thought Gardner was pivotal right there. I would leave him in this game at this point. Now, again, I'm not coach, and I don't know his stamina or where he is right there, but to me, he, had, he was very big in keeping this right where it is. He, he opens up a lot of space yep. wherever he is. I mean, he's a big man, and, and you're not going to stop him down low. Jones, nice move there, puts it up and in. Dwayne Jones having a big game for Penn State Altoona. Eight-point game, 66-58. Pompey. Ellis. Right back to Pompey. Pompey to Perez, almost had it stolen. Now Briggs along the baseline. He'll kick it out to Ellis. Five seconds on the shot clock. Ellis, the one-handed scoop, won't go in. Perez, Perez almost had the rebound. There's a whistle and a foul, and I believe that's going against Penn State Altoona. Let's see who it's on. It's on Baskerville. His second foul. And Pompey will inbound. A long pass for Briggs, who makes a real nice save to keep it on this half of the court. Back to Pompey. Now Perez. Oh, off the hands of Demery. Tried to make that pass for the easy bucket, and the pass was a little too high, and he couldn't corral it. Before that, Pompey had to get that pass off, too. That was about to be a five-second violation. That's the reason why he had to get it off, and I think he got it to the perfect spot so that violation didn't happen. Coming up on the five-minute mark, Hilbert by eight. Tomorrow, White. And now we're under five to play here in the second half. Bush, nice pass down low, and Jones dunks it. Wayne Jones, he's got to be around 20 points, very unofficially. Ellis. Pompey. Back to Ellis for three. No good. Battle for the rebound, tied up. And three, two players hit the deck. And the possession arrow says Penn State, Altoona. And that's who's got the ball. Great effort there by all three of the players. And we'll get more substitutions here now for Hilbert. I, I will say, I think Hilbert's going to have to think about something down low, right? Or something, because Jones right now is big down there in the paint. They're going to need to make an adjustment for him down in the paint. White now with the ball. He stops his dribble and gets it to Bush. Bush with a nice move, goes along the baseline, kicks it way out, nice save by White there. And White will take a jumper, no good. Oh, oh, there's a foul. Looked like Briggs got hit in the face. His, his head snapped back. And he's laughing about it too, which is good. So the Hawks have committed seven fouls and six on Penn State Altoona, and now it's Kyrie Fisher getting some pressure in the back court, into the front court. Back to Fisher. 
Near side, Shaheem Ellis to Demery. Demery sends it back out to Fisher. Under four minutes remaining in the second half. Fisher. Now Fisher. Shaheem Ellis drives, kicks it out, put up by Demery, no good. And White gets the rebound, long pass up ahead to Sheets who lay it up and in. And it's 66 to 62, a six point game. And there's a timeout on the floor. And this timeout is brought to you by Confer Plastics Leisure Accents. And we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back with the final three minutes and 33 seconds. Hilbert 66, Penn State Altoona 62. You're watching Hilbert College Basketball on Buffalo Sports Page. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com, our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream. Learn more at ComfortPlastics.com. I think I have to correct myself. It's a four-point game. I said six-point game, but that was before the two points went up on the board, so I'm giving myself a little bit of a break. 66-62, a four-point game with three minutes and 33 seconds to play. All these games seem to have a funny way of coming right down to the wire. Yep. I mean, the you know, the girls game. But actually, we've done one girls and boys game already, and both of them were great games. Yes. The difference was, remember, the boys went down so big early and had to come rallying back, but still made it a great game. Yes, they did. Now Kyrie's Fisher. Hilbert holding on to that four-point lead. Fisher thought about the three. Instead, he'll get it to Shaheem Ellis, get the ball back. Now Fisher drives, takes the short jumper, and it goes in. 68-62. So good break there for Fisher, getting the roll. Sheets with the ball. Oh, stolen by Perez, who took the ball away from him. Looked like he was setting a pick. And there's a foul on Justin Sheets. And Perez will go to the free throw line. Oh, he just got teed, teed up. up. Yeah. You know, I would call that like uh, taunting in the NFL. Well, no, no, something was said for it. Always the second person, it never fails. Something was said to him, and that's why he pointed up to the scoreboard right there. Yeah, well. Yeah, that was what he did. He pointed up to the scoreboard after something that was said to him, and it never fails. It's usually never the first guy who gets the T. It's always the second one. Yep, you're right about that. And that's why Perez is, you know, you know, saying, listen, it was actually said to me, and all as I did was point. Yes. Well, the officials went to the scorer's table. And now we'll see how this all plays out. So it was a foul on Sheets. White is standing at the free throw line. Technical foul on Perez. So you and I had that one, right? So it's Jamar White at the free throw line. Hilbert holding on to that eight-point lead. Making a seven-point lead as White hits the free throw. Wait, both boys and girls technicals yeah. called late in the game, right, against the home team. Yes, and White makes both free throws. And remember, they... They should get the ball back, too. Well, uh, Hilbert doesn't has to get some free throws, too. Doesn't Perez get some free throws? Because he yes. was fouled? Okay. Yep. So Perez at the free throw line. And we'll see what happens after that. 
You wonder what the rule no, is. No, I think they're going to play it out from here because yeah, nobody would be on right. the line right now. Well, I was just going to say, wonder why the technical is shot before the as Perez makes the first free throw. That Maybe that's what they were discussing at the yep. scorer's table because the foul happened before the technical. Perez, and he will make the second free throw to make it 72-64. Hilbert by eight, under three minutes remaining here in regulation. White into the front court for the Lions to Jones. Bounce pass to Bush, and he missed the layup and hits the deck. He really wanted to foul. He didn't get the call. And here's Fisher back the other way. Fisher dishes it off to Demery. His short jump shot is no good. Loose ball underneath, put up and in by Trayvon Alexis. Big bucket there. And now Bush the other way for Jones. Jones into the paint, puts up a shot, no good, gets his own rebound and scores. And it's 74-66 with 2.19 remaining here in the second half. There's a timeout taken on the floor and this timeout is brought to you by the U.S. Army. So we're gonna see how this one comes right down to the finish. It's an eight point game, but it certainly doesn't feel like an eight point game. No, it feels like it's more a two or a four point game. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. And it's the way that game has kind of played out all day today. But I will say this, if you remember the first half into the second half, it's been about a 10 point lead where Hilbert has been. And it's kind of been between eight and 10 almost the entire game. It got down to four, you know, just a little bit. Hilbert goes back on another run and answers, and that's kind of where we've been right now. Really, it's going to be is who can finish this one out because it's been every time you think one of these teams gets an advantage for something that's been going well for them, it seems to be the answer does happen by the other team and tries to take that advantage away. Yeah, that's so true. 2.19 remaining here in the second half. Eight-point lead by Hilbert. But as we've all seen in basketball, especially with the three-point shot, eight-point leads can disappear in a big, big hurry. Well, if you remember how quick this second half started out, right? Penn State Altoona came out with three big threes and cut down that lead very quickly. So we already know they're capable of doing it. In fact, they've already showed it to us this half. Eight fouls committed by Hilbert, seven by Penn State Altoona. Perez will inbound to Justin Pompey. And the clock now a factor for Penn State Altoona. Pompey almost lost it. Nice save there by Shaheem Ellis. Back to Pompey. Pompey to Perez. Nice move and he puts it up and in. Well done by Edward Perez. Make it a 10 point game, under two minutes remaining in regulation. White drives, puts it up, blocked. Beautifully bumped, blocked by Pompey. Oh, nice move there by Ellis, he'll put up the jumper, no good. Battle for the loose ball off the hands of Briggs and he'll stay with Penn State Altoona. Great block back there, that's for sure. And we'll get a couple of more substitutions as Trayvon Alexis and Kyrese Fisher come back into the game for Hilbert. Pompey and Perez go out. That block, too, it causes an extra possession now, right? Taking away that possession from Penn State right there. When you do that, you only have a certain amount of possessions right now left in this game. White being defended by Fisher. Gets it to Bush. He'll put up the three. Good. Mason Bush takes a three-pointer. What did you just say about three-pointers? Uh, and he was the man who did yeah. that in the beginning of this half, if we remember. I think sometimes you're clairvoyant. <laughs> and we're going to, here's the replay of the Bush three-pointer. This time out is brought to you by Western New York Immediate Care. So a minute 25 remaining, 26 actually, here in regulation. Now the first, the girls game went to overtime. 
and some controversial calls in the end toward the end of that game. But that game was a heartbreaker uh, for the girls. It goes and and again, I'm not even going to say card. It, it's one call. It's a tech. Yeah, right? Right, right, right. It's a technical that's called, and really that to me was the difference. And in, in like we said, to me, at, you know, if I'm out there reffing, I better make sure that that's going to be something that's really egregious that's going to cause me to say this could be the game right here. So now Hilbert will inbound Perez, and he will be guarded by Dwayne Jones as we're seeing full court pressure, as you would expect. They get it to Pompey in the corner. He gets it back to Perez. Into the front court to Briggs. Being guarded by Baskerville. And now it's Demery. Demery looking for a teammate. Gets it to Briggs. And he'll get it to Pompey. And he will just kill the clock here. Oh, it's smart. Why, why not? I'd yeah, use the, all of it up right yeah, here. I thought they would have fouled by now. Here's Pompey dishing it off to Perez, and he slams it home. Perez with the slam, 78-69. We're in the final minute of the second half. And you'll see the replay of the slam dunk. Sheets. Spins. Oh, it goes right to the back. Oh, blocked nicely by Shaheem Ellis. Well, not so nicely there was a foul, but it was a very good looking block, so he must have got him with the body because everything else was all ball. And that'll stop the clock with 41.2 seconds left. And Hilbert leading 78 to 69, a nine point lead. Stu, what I will really believe Hilbert has done very well, especially here towards the end of the game, is break that full court press very easily. They've gotten the ball down the court very easily with ease and broken that full court press. And that's a big thing right there because how many times do we see that full court press happen? Turnovers, easy points, and it happens constantly. I thought flawlessly they broke that press and it was something to their advantage. Sheets makes both free throws, making an eight point game. Inbounded to Pompey, he's double teamed, and the ball was knocked away, but fortunately for Hilbert, it stays with the Hawks. And Perez will inbound. Perez and Briggs have had big games for the Hawks. Dwayne Jones guarding the inbounder, that would be Edward Perez. Just under 40 seconds remaining, or just over 39 seconds. Wilbert looking to put the W in its back pocket. Well, always a possibility if we'd see that long home run pass here. Perez. Yeah, take a look way down, way down the court. And they get it to Briggs, and he's fouled almost immediately by Sheets, which will stop the clock. And we'll send Briggs to the free throw line. You don't want to go to the football game yet. We'll give you an update. Ravens are up 3-0. You can stay here for the last 37 seconds before you go over to that game. That would be an amazing upset if uh, Houston found a way. I'll tell you what, that C.J. Stroud is fun to watch. My, oh, my. Yep, I'll tell you, I, I really think going into this weekend, the only real game that should be a game is the Bills-Chiefs game. I just wish, I do wish that the Bills defense wasn't so banged up. I don't see how they can pull it off. Briggs makes the free throw as much as I'd like to see it. In a perfect world, all these NFL teams would always be healthy, but the sport is so violent that you'll, you'll never get that. And folks, you want to check out probably, I'd say, either later tonight or tomorrow morning. Look for the post-game interviews, as we'll be doing post-game interviews with some players of the game here for the Hilbert team. Here's White. And Jones missed the dunk on the rebound. They get it to Demery. And now Ellis, and he's fouled by Sheets, and he hits the deck. And the Penn State Altoona coach, not happy. And he's letting the officials hear it a little bit. One of the officials will go over and talk to him. In the meantime, Hilbert will shoot more free throws. Shaheem Ellis at the free throw line, 80 to 71. Just under 25 seconds remaining here in the second half. I mean, quite a game. Hilbert just less than 25 seconds away from a win. A hard fought win. And the first time we did this, the girls won, the boys lost in a tight one. This, we flip it. The boys, uh, you know, look like they're going to go on for a win, and the girls lose a tight one. 
Nellis at the free throw line. Second free throw is around and out. Jones gets the rebound and he'll put it on the floor, send it into the front court. Sheets will launch a three, no good. Ellis gets the rebound. Under 15 seconds remaining here in the second half as Ellis is into the front court and he can just dribble out the clock here and he will. And that'll do it. Hilbert will win this one by a final score. There's the buzzer of 81 to 71. Outstanding game. This game brought to you by Logistics Plus. So an outstanding game. Hilbert wins by 10, 81, 71. Tom, that's just a solid all-around performance by the Hawks. Yeah, it really is. And um, really had the lead most of the game. Held it, and, and it was what we talk about. That 10-point lead is almost where it stood, and that's exactly how it's going to finish. I thought rebounding was the key to this game, really giving themselves second-chance opportunities, especially in the offensive rebounding. And you can't talk enough to the end of this game, breaking that full-court press and really giving your team an opportunity to get down on the court and set up your offense. So that'll do it from Hilbert. The Hawks win this one over Penn State, Altoona. 81 to 71. I want to thank our producer Heidi Gunther, our photographer Russ Battaglia, and of course the greatest color man of them all, Tom Prince. My name is Stu Boyer, and once again that final score: Hilbert 81, Payne State Altoona 71. Have a good night, everybody.